Good afternoon. I'm Ian Wardropper, director of the Frick Collection. I'm delighted to open the proceedings for the Spring Symposium, ordered, um, organized by the Center for the History of Collecting. Um, I lose count, but I believe this is the 20th symposium the Center has hosted in its 11-year history, all of which have encouraged us to view art that we love through the lens of the collectors. And this is certainly something that we do every day at the Frick Collection as we live with the legacy of one of America's greatest art collectors. I want to thank the sponsors of this two-day event, the Edith O'Donnell Institute of Art History, Northern Trust, and Christie's. And above all, I'd like to thank the staff of the center, a small staff of just three people um, who have created really a robust set of programs since the center was launched 11 years ago. Over these years, the center has blossomed and has elevated the stature of this comparatively new discipline of the study of the history of art collecting through its fellowships, oral history program, publications now numbering eight books with a ninth um, in production, and most publicly through symposia such as this. Many of the center's previous symposia have focused on categories of art not often identified with the frick, photography, Spanish colonial and Latin American art, for example. But the presentations today and tomorrow will bring us closer to home as the Frick displays exceptional paintings by Monet, Renoir, and Degas among its trove of old masters. Perhaps more significantly in this context, for almost a century, the Frick Art Reference Library, the home of the center, has provided researchers on Impressionist paintings with exceptional, often unique, material garnered through close relationships with Parisian and other European dealers and agents who supplied the library with photographs and checklists uh, that would become essential to tracing ownership. Some descendants of those Parisian contacts will be with us this weekend and speaking at the symposium. My first full-time job in a museum was at the Art Institute of Chicago in 1982 as an assistant curator in the Department of European Paintings and Sculpture, reporting to Rick Bertel. <laughs> I have pleasant memories of wandering the Art Institute galleries before public hours, surrounded by the museum's great Impressionist paintings. So rich are its holdings that I could select Monet's or Pizarro's for my office walls. The collecting of, I don't know if I could still do that, but the collecting of Impressionism in Chicago, dating back to Bertha Palmer, Martin Ryerson, and others, uh, was a potent influence on the history of collecting in that city, so much so that in, in the 80s and still today, it's a potent um, uh, force. Under Rick Bertel and his successors, the Art Institute organized some of the most important exhibitions on Impressionist and post-Impressionist art. So I look forward to the insights of this symposium from uh, the role of individuals in American cities to its global reach. I will now turn the proceedings over to Inga Riest, the founding director of the Center for the History of Collecting, who will introduce the topic of the day, and our keynote speaker and my first boss, Rick Bertel. Well, thank you so much, Ian, and um, let me add my thanks to the Edith O'Donnell Institute, Christie's, and Northern Trust for their generous support of this symposium. And I would also, as always, like to extend my great thanks to Stephen Berry, the Andrew W. Mellon Chief Librarian at the Frick Art Reference Library, who has consistently supported uh, this and really all of the center's programming over the years, and most especially my heartfelt thanks are due to the center's assistant directors, uh, Esme Quadbach and Samantha Deutsch, for all that they do to effectively uh, ensure that the details of this two-day event uh, are taken care of and run smoothly to give us all a memorable and thought-provoking occasion. Now to our topic. It seems reminiscing is, is in the air. Decades ago, when I was cutting my teeth as a graduate student in art history, the overused aphorism was that for museums, Monet meant money. <laughs> and whether, whether that was museum attendance or auction sales, 
And I watched the André Mayer galleries open at the Met with great fanfare. I saw one after another dazzling exhibition, draw crowds to blockbuster shows while auction prices were breaking records constantly. And on a personal note, I was married at the time to an artist who was also taken by the Impressionist style, which he emulated in his early days, well enough, apparently, that his schoolmate, Charlie Moffat, who we all miss very much, uh, rather tongue-in-cheek, encouraged him to do a few forgeries, but he never did. He never did. <laughs> that was all in the 1970s. But now fast forward to our center's 21st century world of collecting taste. Given our early exposure and recent memories of the popularity Impressionist paintings uh, hold and the extraordinary prices pictures by Monet and others commanded on the world stage, how was it that the center has taken 11 years to get around to doing a symposium on collecting Impressionist art? We don't really have an explanation, but I can tell you that a year ago or so, our distinguished advisory committee wondered the same thing. Uh, they noted what a worthy topic for exploration the taste for Impressionist art could be, with analyses of geographic distributions and varied motivations of different collectors, really delving deeply into such matter matters. So we decided then and there that the adventurism of early collectors in France and abroad, the role of courageous dealers and agents, and the international appeal of this art that was initially rejected and then so thoroughly embraced should indeed be the subject of a forthcoming symposium. We are in for a great ride today and tomorrow, and this is very much thanks to Rick Brittell, our keynote speaker, and his partners in symposium organizing crime, Joachim and Lionel Pizarro, who have also been advising us all along the way.